G'day, how you going? Ian Aplis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video channel. What I want to teach you what you can paint in acrylic, and this is my free gift to you. There's the size of my canvas up there, and I will also have some colours running up the screen that I choose to use in this tutorial today. And if it's your first time here, give me a comment and tell me where you're from, okay? So I'd like to bring you on over here now, and we'll get right into it. So the horizon line area is a bit over halfway because we're kind of looking just down at this, okay? We're not level and we're not looking up at it. So the horizon line governs where you are. You could be on a bit of a ledge here looking down at this winter lake scene and this open area here is going to be the lake we're going to have some beautiful reflections and a bit of mid-ground hill with some snow and shadowing there all our trees and the background just mashed in there okay down here i want to get a bit of a winter sky so first i'm just going to pick up some of this soft bodied titanium white i call it craft paint but it's just a soft body and i'll use this just to block in my sky area just so as if there's any sky peeking through the trees, it's not going to be a dark background or an empty background. There'll be something there just filling the void. That's why I'm choosing just to map in the sky here. You're probably not going to see much of this sky, but I just want it to be there in case it peeks through the trees there. So I'm not going to cloud it up. I've got no retarder in it. I don't need it dry. I mean wet for a long time to keep it open. I just want to get it on there and have it in the background. And back down on the palette, I've just wiped the white out of that brush and I want to get the grey and the blue and just mix in a winter, wintry coloured sky value here. So I've got cerulean blue and mid-tone grey and I'll just get this pushed onto the canvas. So that's nice. It's got that blue vibe, but it's very grey and wintry. So I'll pull it down, scratch it into the canvas. Now I've got some burnt umber and yellow ochre, so I'll pull out the yellow ochre and get some burnt umber in there because I want to get a lighter value of my burnt umber. And I think putting the yellow ochre in there, it's just going to give it a bit of a warmth. So if there's any sunlight peeking through, it's warmed it up a bit. So my mound, I had a, like a bit of a mound here which I want to keep in the painting. So behind, behind all that, I want to get this and it just block it in and just let it fade away into the light. I'll show you what I mean when I get it there. So get all this in there. I'm mixing up some more, I didn't mix up enough. Because it's gonna be right in the background. You'll get a jest. If you saw the picture in the opening credits, uh, you know what the painting's gonna look like. And if you watch the video a couple of times, you'll get an idea of, why I'm doing what I'm doing, you can set yourself up. So when you're painting along with this video, you won't be in the dark wondering what's he doing next. You wanna know what's coming up around the corner so you're prepared for it, okay? Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is pick up some of the craft white on my brush and just from the blue, just like this, just kind of blend this white down into that brown so it's a gradient, gradual value of it going into the darker. And this can just fade up into the blue there. Grab another brush all together, some of the white, and then tinsel that back together into that brown while it's a little bit wet. But don't bring too much of the brown back up into the blue area. So we've got a simple way of gradually merging those colours within our acrylic paints there, okay? Because, like I said, this is all going to be behind the tree, so it's just, if it wasn't there, you would notice it missing into that there. Because not much of the sky is going to be seen, but like I said, whatever we do see, well, at least it's there. It's not like a, a, a bare patch within our painting. So what I've pretty much done, long story short, we got the brown and we've slowly faded it into the sky. Now I'm grabbing some of the burn umber on its own first, just to get pockets of this dark, where it's gonna have the foreground in front of it. And let this, don't have a lot on your brush, wipe it off. You can scramble that back into that medium, let's say the medium color you got there, okay? Get the I'll pull that across. 
like on that. And what's on this side here? Let me look in the monitor. I could see a bit of um, a bit of a line there. I don't want. Where did that go? I want to scramble that up a bit. Now, I simply want to grab that black with some burn umber. So I can blackulate the burn umber. Wipe the bulk of it off your brush. And I just want the very bits of it here, pockets of black. Not too much, not too much at all. Just We might have to come back later if we feel when we've got the foreground on, if we feel we need some darker bits within there, okay? Now my trees are going to be here, but I want just something, let's say at the top here, in the background, distant. So I've got my sap green, and I want to mix up the value of that, just a little bit of cadmium yellow light. Cadmium yellow light's cooler than cadmium yellow medium. So get some of this in there. I could probably get a bit of white and mint it up as well, because it's just in the distance here. Now, I just want bits of this popped in I could see some of the sky big deal I like to that's why I put the sky there just background stuff where my trees are gonna go About there. so there I want all this treed in and it can have some sky windows in it here and there come down a bit beyond so as you can have some windows of the next trees in this. See? Turn my brush around, get it up there. I'm grabbing some forest green with that sap green. Probably a, I'll nick a little bit of black, not too much black. Just so as I can get a darker vibe of that going. And I just want some pockets of dark within this. Did I dry it? I don't know. I, I should dry it. I should have, would have, could have dried it. I just want some darker bits here and there. I've grabbed the, the sap green again with a little bit of white in it again. Just so as these couple of colours here, we can sit them down a bit so they're not harsh. There's not much there, but it's just enough to sink it down. Let me get some water on my brush. Just sinking them down. Now I've got this colour here, the burn umber and the yellow ochre. Grab that again. And we want to map in our, just behind the mid ground there. I'm just going to use that same filbert brush. And something about here, there's that forward rock. So these are like big boulders. It's like a Japanese. I saw something like this and it's like a Japanese winter scene. And this is coming down there like that. So I'm just getting all that rocked in. And some of this we want just get some more of that darker burn umber. I uh, want some of this of black in it. Just scooting out there in the distance, joining up to that. So I've kind of done bits like that. Now put a minute bit of black in that because we need bits of black in here. So I want to come down. Now dry it. I haven't dried this. I feel I'm going to have to, but I'll see if I can get it in wet. So I've created the, the dark values within the shape of that rock. And then we're going to put the snow within them. Dark in here. Like you need those darks to complement the lights. I'm grabbing the yellow oxide and some of the burn umber. I want this to look like sunlight hitting the tops of some of that burned umber colour in there, okay? Just so as we can get some a hint of light hitting the top of some of these rocks in there, some sunlight just scattering through. I've dried it, I have dried it. And now it looks a bit weird, but once we put everything in front of it, it's going to bring it home. Okay, I've got my titanium white and me blue. 
I want to mix up the snow colour, which is this blue, bluey white, very powdery pale blue. It's just that cerulean blue I got there. And this rock that we put there, this is going to have some snow on it. So I want to get the snow from about the top here and just cascading down to that rock, but not all over it. I've dried the painting, the painting's dry. I want it a lot more dry than that. There's very little snow on here. Brushes are great for painting your rocks in acrylic. Just some dirty, dirty pockets of slit and snow, whatever they call it. Let me have a look in the monitor there. This is still gonna have a lot of trunks and trees behind it, so it's just making up for the vibe of it all. A little bit tucked in here. Now this side I'm gonna have kind of have the ground scooping up. Now, from the horizon line to here, that's a more closer mound, snow-driven bit of land. Before I put that in, I just want to put the distance trees here, so as I'm virtually coming forward with everything. Now I'm going to try and keep it simple. You can go as wild with your colour mixing as you want. I'm just going to use the sap green and the cad yellow light for these section of trees. And that's the ones that are here. And then I'll have some more in front. So these, that's got black in it, but not much yellow. This is gonna have a lot more yellow in it to break up that color from this color. But I need to get this in first. So I'm gonna push them in and I wanna make, where, how far will I come? Probably about there. Now, I want them to come down about this big. Okay, try not to get it too watery, otherwise things could look a bit weird. Coming all the way along here. And we'll get a bit over here. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna set this forward from that background stuff we just done. So grabbing just what's in your brush with the cadmium yellow light, not medium, cadmium yellow light. And dry what's on your canvas so it's gonna stick and not turn into mud. Now you can put that down, grab some of this burnt umber and black over here on a script liner, and we're just gonna trace in some trunks. Now these trunks, they can come all different back and forward from each other, okay, like this. I've put the bottom part there, but we're gonna put some trunks into these trees. So keep them straight, straight is the key. I'll show you, you'll see and understand why when I do it. Get some trunks up there. Don't worry if some of them cross each other, let them cross each other, just to make it look a bit more busy up there and up there, straight. Look at that, straight trunks, it's the best way. It just looks more kind of realistic. We pretty much put this on before we highlight it so we can sink these down within the, the canopy of trees there. Now, obviously, you do your own trees. If you've got a favorite tree you like to paint, put that style in your painting. Don't have to be the exact same ones that I'm doing here. Now we've got to connect a lot of these to the ground as well. So it might seem like a lot of sauce for the amount of spaghetti we're gonna eat, but you can do it, it's worth the effort. See where the bottom of these are? We wanna darken them up a little bit. I've just grabbed an appropriate brush, just so as I can, I've got a bit more black. I don't want it too wet. I wanna just kind of fump some debris and darkness at the base of these trunks here, where are we? And you know, like pockets of rubbish. Just grabbing some white with what was in your liner. I'm just gonna stick to one side. 
and I'm not going to do all of them, I'll probably do the main ones. Okay, now back down to this yellow green that we mixed. I want to bring these trees in front of what's behind now. So a lot of what's behind is going to get covered up. But that colour we put in there, you want to leave darkness of that as well. Come down. Come down over your trunks and sink them back within the painting. Come across and just artistically find your way to sink back your trunks that you put in there. Just so they don't look weird and in front. Now, just with what's in your brush, grab some more cadmium yellow light and just mix that up so we're going to get a, rot, a lot more yellow green vibe going. Bring these trees now in front of what's all behind. Watch how it brings it all behind, in front of me. Come down. Look at the, the lights hitting this stuff. Now you can use I probably could use a lot more smaller filbert, but I'll get by with this one, I hope. Now I've grabbed a detail brush and some water in that colour there, I'm mixing it up just so I can get the tip of this brush. See how this is blobby and stops? This is just going to add fine leaf details out in the open there. And you're just turning snot into bullshit. Just get some of this out there. Bring it down, feather it in. This is a uh, this can be time consuming doing this, but my goodness, it's way worth it when you look at the finished product. And I want to do that more often in my trees, I like it. And it's just adding more sharpness, lustre, realism. I mean, learning to do trees detailed is another tutorial within itself. Down here, where I feel, you watch here, let's say here, we can add some of this. It's just going to give it a bit more charisma I feel. I'm just adding some more white to some of that green just so as I can sh give you an example because this is a tutorial and I do want you to get examples so see here this will stand out now above all that so it's not looking mushy. Now today's the 28th of February here 2023 and for me it's a Tuesday morning, 10 past 11 in the morning. So we'll just see how long this takes to get sent out on my channel when it's activated to be viewable, how long the process is gonna take. Um, yeah, I'm just, I wanna put effort into this and I want you to put effort into your work as well. Take your time, practice. Just practice trees, blocking in and then adding the detail on top. Some of this light, like I said, can be poking through here. Okay, that's filled in. I want to put this piece here so I can put these trees on. So I'll start with me dark burnt umber here. A bit more black into that. So somewhere around here. I'll get the shape of this in. And then I'll, this is going to have snow on it, but I need to do it in a dark value so as we'll have the dark of properties there. To use my flat brush for this as well. I'm just using this filbert all the time for some reason. Okay, get that there. I'll come across here as well. And I want to get some dark bits spatting up. I've added a little bit more black here because we're going to have 
just some shrubby nonsense in front of that snow there, pushing it back. I'm gonna go back to this blue, white blue value we got here. And I wanna paint this so-called white. This is a bit brighter than that white we put there because it's sinking that other one back now. Go. And I just want this to kind of look a bit natural if I can help it. I do want some pockets of darkness where some trees will be, like so. Like that. Where are we? We can probably have this scratching down there. Big pockets of dirt where the snow didn't quite get. Now I do want to get a bit more blue into there, so I'm just scratching a lot more blue into that white. Probably some here and there, some darker values of it. It's there, something there, I don't know. Now with these, I do want to get them a bit darker, just to create the depth within them, so I'm grabbing probably 80, 20 black brown. Okay, I've got the script liner, the, the brown and the black, and we're going to just start working out now. I want some trees behind here, just straight up, stop. See, it's not inky enough, it's breaking, so I've got to add a bit more and wiggle it in. First one always works out dumb. What I'm doing is I'm just sort of putting the ones behind what I feel I want behind this rock. And they're gonna stand out above everything. Like I said before, look, just straight. Straight next to it. Straight coming off it. Yeah, so I want one about here, about there. Because they're coming up. They're gonna come off the, pretty much off the, um, canvas. One about here, another one about there. And we're adding, the way I've laid all this out now, there's backwards and forwards within it all, within the painting. Okay, now we've got to get the grey colour, put a bit of white with this just to grey it up so we can see the sides of those trunks. So that colour we had before down here, and we'll gingerly and get some of these grey. You want to see this colour. Bring it right down into the base there. I've grabbed some black, just black, before I detail it, because from here I just want to get some, I don't know, some fine, sticky, like, dead stuff down here. If you want to do this, do it. If you don't want to do it, or well, simply leave it out. Now I've just grabbed another smaller detailed brush. And if you want to grab some pure white and just kind of maybe sink some stuff back with pure white here and there. All right, now I've got me yellow ochre, I've got cerulean blue, and I've got my forest green. I'm going to use the forest green to, they're gonna be a different value to those other greens there. So I wanna use the forest green to get my green in. And I might have to put a little bit of blue into that. No, not blue, where are we? I'll just pinch a bit of black just to get a bit over here, just to get it dark, to put the first depth colour on, okay? I'll start from this one, and they're gonna come off the painting. There we go, is that dark enough? I think so. And I just wanna make lots of shapes like that. Just sinking back my trunks, sinking back those other trees there. I 
Now you can see all that nonsense we did before. It's there. It's in the background. It's not looking empty. Come there. Just grab some of this yellow ochre and the cerulean blue and we'll get a bit of a green going here, like a khaki green. Don't go everywhere with this, just sort of pick your places, mainly the it's in the unders. Oh, my brush is a bit... Let's try it again. Start over here. There we go. Got it. Sometimes you've got to prime your brush up and get it going. Bits of deadness here. There we go. Bits of deadness. That's it. Don't overdo it. Don't, you don't want to turn all your trees into a mushy carpet looking vibe. You want to see everything within it. Now I'm grabbing my forest green out of there. And I want to grab me cadmium yellow medium now. This is medium, not light. So this is a warmer yellow than the cadmium yellow light. Yeah, there we go. Get it lushing out over there, lushing out over there, pushing those back. I want to get this one there over your, your dead green wood colour. There we go, simple. I want some of this there and just over there, but try and get rid of those patterns that it's creating. Have a bit down there. I'm pretty much highlighting the right side and tapering within the tree, pushing the one in behind it behind. I wouldn't mind putting a bit of white into that mix now. I'm just getting a bit of white into it, just so this side here can have actual brighter light hitting it, just that edge there. Now what I want to do here is just map in this water first and then we can bring that in front of it because we want to get all these beautiful reflections into the water. So I'm simply going to grab this craft white, I'll use that just to prime it up. And I want to come about here. Just to get me water area. While I'm putting this here, it'll help me waterfy the colours that I'm going to put into the water. Now I've got my forest green. I want to use this just to get the green values within the water, the main green values within the water. Okay and then we can highlight it appropriately and drag our reflections down. I did give that white a little bit of a dry, but I probably didn't need to, but anyway, I might have to put it back again. There we go, so as I can get this flowing across. Do not dry your white once you put it on because it makes it harder to get this color on. Put that white back that I dried. <laughs> there we go. Right across there. Grabbing the burnt umber and the black. See everything here I've sprayed with water because we need to come back to these colours to pull them down in the reflection. I just want to come along here. Like so. Get some more on your brush. Right across here. Make them for all that land out there. Stamp it on. Come across. And just pull it down so it's scratchy like that so to speak get your dark all the way across here get it back up into there pull it down I'm just using a flat brush here do a bit at a time that's where I want the thickness and I want to pull down from about here thickness there pull down about here Pull down as well. 
Keep him straight in. I'm trying. It's sometimes it gets hard. I've given it a dry. I want to grab here now and just feel where you need the white. That's not going all the way to the bottom down here, okay? Because this bit is the rest of that as well. We're going to have a bit of snow dividing this up, so don't worry too much about being particular about that bit. Get that up there. I can put the darks back in. I was trying to paint around the darks, but I'll show you what I'll do for there. Grab yourself, I don't know, any small brush. Grab the darker value again. I've just grabbed a little flat here. And see where our darker bits are. Get them back again and then pull them down. You want those distinct bits within your reflection. It just makes for more realistic. Now I've pretty much got these green values here. I want to get the highlighted colour and just pick up some of that on the same brush I used. And I want to come from the black Put it on and pull it down. Pulling it down. This is not quite dark enough here. I mean bright enough. Coming from here. Pulling it straight down, up and right downwards. I'm just going to grab the, the burnt umber and the black, probably put a little bit of white to grey it up a bit down here. Burnt umber and black. Just something I can replicate uh, these trunks. I want to go too fat. Just getting my phalo blue and my cadmium yellow light because I want this vivid, nice vivid yellow colour here, uh, yellowy green colour here, just in my reflections. And I want to just sink those trunks back but getting bits of this within our pull downs. <laughs> Come right down. about there that's it I've got some glaze and I'll put a little bit of white in it just so as I can put a film on top of my water the best way to get your film on the water is with your bullshit stick and just come straight across your work like that oh, bam different thicknesses even get your brush on its edge like this just to get like you know how the knife does things and just And this stick just helps get them level. And you really want to sink those reflections down. Now, I've got cerulean blue, don't need too much, and I want to block it in with 
a cerulean blue vibe of that titanium white. I'll start out here and we'll get this horizon line where are we? blocked in, keeping it level. I'll use my bullshit stick to get the horizon area quite level because I want that to be quite good. So pretty much along here, we'll get this top bit level. I'm not worried about the bottom half of the line because that'll be in the, um, that can scoot up like that over here. Just sort of scoot up into there like that. Have a band of it there. And I want to start bringing this out this way gingerly. So I've combed down. I'll move my stick out the way so you can see what I'm doing. And I want to get this now, just block this in. This is the snow on this edge here. Now I want to bring this kind of coming down and around. Yeah, that'll do. Block all this in with your whitey bluey colour. Okay, so let me look in my monitor. I'm looking, I'm looking. I would have liked water to come out there more. Okay, so what I might do. This bit here can kind of come there. Now I do want the edge of this reasonably sharp here because it's in focus. I don't want it hairy like that. There we go. Now we can give this a dry, add a bit more darker blues where we feel we might want some and, and then we'll highlight it with pure white. I'll get some here like that just to kill that bit. just to distort that weird corner I had going there. Now I'm grabbing more blue, putting into that white powdery blue I had here just to get a darker value. And probably, where are we? Bits along the bottom here, I'll darken up where it's hitting the water. Little bit there. That bit I had scratching up, I wanna kinda do that. Pockets of darkness here, out there somewhere. Just like that. Pockets of darkness here, crisscrossing and like X strokes, number eight strokes kind of vibe going there. Let the edges fade. Don't have them solid if you can help it. This is just mumble jumble here. The white's gonna really shape it. Now I've grabbed pure white and I wanna come, let's say from the middle here, bring it up to the top. We'll create some dimension in there. Up to the top again, just like that. Keeping the brush horizontal like that and I want to get some bands coming up here just kind of showing some weird winds formation or whatever's in the snow it's not just willy-nilly we're putting some effort into it how's that looking in the monitor not too bad probably bring something out onto this Shelf here, where are we? Just on the top side of it, not the bottom side of it. And then we can come to here and just try and get... A 
bits of highlighted snow here. How's that looking for, that's okay. It's a bit weird there, I'll fix that up. And the same thing here, sort of swooping, wavy bits and bobs here, highlighting it. Can I have a look at that? That's looking reasonable. Just grabbing my black and burn umber on my script liner. Because right here I want just, I don't know, it's maybe an old dead tree. Get a bit of white into it. I want it like a grey. Just a scraggly old dead tree. I just want to sign this down here and then we'll whack a frame on it see how she looks and I also want to thank my YouTube members and my patrons who support me every month. Much appreciated. I would like to try and encourage you to support me. The more you support me, the more I can be here doing these videos for you people. And give me a comment. Right, let's whack a frame on that and see how she looks. There we go. That's not too shabby. We've got a winter lake scene. My frame's kind of covering the top of it up a bit, but anyway. Um, yeah, we've got a few things going on there. Give it a go, because I know you can do it. Well, that was interesting and a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a comment below, like I said, and tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Also, check out this other video of mine, and feel free to subscribe. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.